Dread it. Run from it. Destiny still arrives. I am inevitable. Raccoon Tycoon is a game of indulgence, greed, and the cold procyanid hands of the free market. You know, capitalism. Players take turns producing resources, buying buildings, purchasing towns, auctioning railroad titles, and leveraging the commodity market for sweet, sweet personal gain. But like most fairy tales, in the end, money is actually meaningless if you did nothing with it. Play continues until two or three of the purchasable assets dry up and points are awarded for sets of railroads, towns, buildings, and secret goals, though money serves to break a tie. On a turn, you can take one action, and most of the economics in the game start with production cards. When played, they increase the price of each commodity shown at the top. Then you collect up to three of the commodities shown on the bottom, which can be further modified by buildings you own. As another action on your turn, you can sell any number of one type of commodity for its current price, but afterwards, due to all cardboard laws of supply and demand, the corresponding commodity track reduces by one value for each commodity you sold. The immediacy and control you have over these markets feels intuitive, powerful, and cool. For all the flurry of money and commodities in the game, you actually have to think about what you're going to do with it. Now, diligent strategists may be attracted to buildings, and while they're worth only one point each, each of them increases your maximum capacity for commodities by one, and have unique abilities which may assist with production, getting extra cash, or even getting you extra points at the end of the game. So it's important to have a few of them. On the other hand, there are towns. Now towns are worth more points, and they're worth even more points if they can be paired with railroad titles, but they cost commodities straight up, which is going to be important when you're judging what you want to sell. But if you spend all your commodities on towns, then you may not have actually sold enough to have some real spending power when bidding on railroad auctions, which railroad titles are where you get some real points in the game. On your turn, you can start an auction and players continue to bid money until everyone has passed, which everyone watches with close intent. If you know your opponent is packing a ton of money, drive up the price of the railroad they want because they become progressively more valuable the more you have in a set. Or start an auction when people are strapped because you know you'll get away with it cheap. Auctions in this game feel strategic, interactive, and fair. Raccoon Tycoon is an ecosystem where everything you do comes down to some sort of cost, whether it's financial or the opportunity cost of not being able to do two things at once. Turn after turn, you'll have to make simple but tough choices that impact everyone at the table. This is the tight balancing act of the game. It's dynamic but approachable. It's very easy to understand the network of actions while still having to make some hard interactive decisions. Whether it's buying something, flipping a new building, railroad, or town, producing, inflating various markets, or selling, causing one's commodity market to crash down, every player is invested in what you do. And I could go on and on about how good it feels to completely tank the coal market before someone else gets to make their sale, but I also want to focus on how unique this game feels in the modern game world. Something about it feels very old, and no, I'm not just talking about the super cute and kind of creepy Victorian animal theme, though that's part of it. It's the familiarity to games of the past, from the lavish, semi-laminated paper money, which yes, I love, to the open bidding, to the fact that this game is all about selfishly gathering all of the stuff. There are tons of echoes of family game nights up in here, except this game is very strategic and really fun. This game has some fantastic production values too. Haters may hate on paper money, but there's something uniquely satisfying about dropping a fat stack of bills on an auction that soared above everyone's expectations. The large size cards feel substantial and showcase the fantastic and completely original artwork of the game, and the tokens from the commodities to the oh my god this thing is gargantuan first player token round out the presentation showing that this game cares about substance and style. If there's anything I don't like about the game, it's that it's easy to lose the forest for the trees. This game inspires greed like no other, and players can get stuck in a loop of production and sales for getting the point is points, extending the game longer than it should. Also, this is a game of boom and bust, where you can feel extremely wealthy one turn and suddenly feel at complete disadvantage to every player. Good play is rewarded, but it's hard to get a quick feel for how everyone stands at the table at any given time, but in no way did any of this stop me from having a ton of fun. 
I also want to mention that this game scales incredibly well. I mean, heck, in a two-player game, the auctions feel like a game of chicken because each player only gets one bid. And so every time someone says, you know what, 20 on Sly Fox, it feels like a threat, like a gauntlet is being thrown down. And that is awesome. I think I like it best at three to four players, but I would gladly play it at any player count. I've had few game nights in my life where I played a game as highly strategic as this that it's invited so many laughs, so many declarations of outrage, so much thematic engagement as I have with this game. And I think a lot of that has to do with the kind of familiarity that it trades on while still bringing something really modern to the table. So from its gameplay to its overall sense of style, I love Raccoon Tycoon, and that is the Cardboard Herald's review. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you check out the other stuff on our channel. If you have any questions about anything we cover today, this video, the game, whatever, let us know in the comments below. Hope you stay tuned for all the great stuff we have on the horizon. Thanks again for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcasts, and video here on our channel and website cardboardherald.com. Our content is audience supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.